Overwatch is a great sounding video game. It is. I like the way the rockets whoosh before they boom. I like Roadhog's heavy footsteps and his constant wheezing. I like the main theme, especially this bit right here. And perhaps, controversially, I even sort of like Tracer's pseudo-British accent. Huh? Yeah, I know. But that's not actually the topic of this video. It's close, we're still talking about sound design, but specifically, I want to talk about how Blizzard manages to convey a whole lot of information, incredibly useful information, to the player through their use of audio. I caught a talk from the Overwatch team at this year's GDC called The Elusive Goal, Play by Sound, and I'm hoping to condense a lot of what I heard there with some of my own experiences from the beta, and basically, point out some of the stuff that I find to be really impressive. Let's start with something relatively straightforward, hearing an enemy Thera leap into the air and shout justice reigns from above. If you played Overwatch you'll know that's an important line, it's a bad thing that's about to happen because that is her ultimate ability, it's very powerful and you hear that, you even hear the word justice and you're already running for cover or reacting and trying to take her out before she decimates your team. You probably don't give a lot of thought to that line because it's, it's something you react to subconsciously, instinctively, and that's that's great. But even within that scenario, there are a couple of smart ideas at play. The Overwatch team at some point talked about adding a variety of lines for Farrah to use as she activates that ability, perhaps to flesh out the character a little, but in the end decided no, consistency is way more important here. The players need to be able to associate that one single line with that one single ultimate. The moment they hear the word justice, they need to know exactly what's about to happen. The one exception to this rule, however, is when a Thera on your team uses her ultimate. When that happens, the enemy players will still hear the big Justice Reigns from above line, but you won't. You'll hear this instead. Rocket barrage incoming. And this, in turn, prevents any confusion as to whether or not you're in danger, while still letting you know that a teammate is doing something important that's very likely going to impact your game. This is the case for every ultimate in Overwatch. I just picked Theras because hers is one of the more dramatic, I guess. A single line for enemy ultimates and a different single line for teammates. That's clean and it's simple and it makes the game better to play. Now we don't talk about this part of game design anywhere near enough. I know we don't and that sucks, but that's because a lot of this stuff, especially when done really well, is just sort of absorbed as you play. You don't stop and think about it, you just react to it. I remember stumbling upon this video for the first time as it did the rounds on the Overwatch subreddit and suddenly realised what a difference the hero's unique footsteps had already been making in all of the games I'd played. Without really considering it, I'd already been identifying which hero was about to run around the corner ahead of me based on how heavy their steps were or how quickly it sounded like they were moving. Let's run through some examples so you can see what I mean. Uh, you've got Mercy, right? She's a support hero, not a huge threat on her own, so her footsteps are a little quieter than most, but still you can tell it's her. She's light on her feet, she's wearing heels, you can hear that. McCree, his are slightly heavier, you can hear the spurs as he moves, which is a really nice touch. Reaper, he's got big weighty stumps, which is useful, because he's going to be trying to flank you with those close range with the shotguns of his. You want to hear that coming. Tracer, also a flanking character, but very fast and very light on her feet. She's much more difficult to pinpoint, and that, that works for her character. She's supposed to be all over the place, hard to kind of uh, locate. Bastion, he's much slower. Is he he? It's much slower. He's big mechanical thuds as he moves. Junkrat, he's got a peg leg. It sounds like he has a peg leg. That's wonderful. Roadhog, which we mentioned at the beginning, he's a big fella and he's got these big steps to match that. And the constant wheezing through the gas mask of his helps a lot too. And that's all useful information to the player. It adds a bit of character to each of the heroes, which is nice, but first and foremost, this is about gameplay. Oh god, I think I've listened to too many Blizzard producers talk about that statue and that plaque. Overwatch is full of these very clear audio cues. Have you noticed, for example, that when Mercy is healing a player, the pitch changes as they approach full health? Let's get you back out there. Or that when Lucio uses his ultimate, you can judge its timer entirely from the sound it makes as it depletes. Oh, let's break it! Damn! These are all really useful things, but it's actually something called the important system, which takes into account all of this information, decides what the player needs to hear the most, that really ties it all together. So its aim, this important system, is to answer these questions for each player by deciding what is the most important sounds they individually need to hear right now. Who's my greatest threat? Who am I looking at? Who's looking at me? Who is close by? Who's shooting the weapon nearby? Who is using a dangerous ability? Who is damaging me? These factors all play a role. 
let's explain how that works. An easy place to start is the footsteps, actually. They're relatively low down in the list of important things, so if you're in a big firefight, they're not going to be a priority. Of course not. The player isn't going to be able to pay attention to them anyway, and probably doesn't want to. There's more important things going on, with guns firing and gorillas jumping about the place. So, the volume of the footsteps is heavily reduced. But if you're yet to engage the enemy team, if you're not in a firefight, then suddenly footsteps are absolutely crucial. If there's nothing else to consider, they're given a big boost in the audio mix. If there's a Reinhardt lumbering towards you, you'll know about it. You need to know about it. It's also worth pointing out that within this system, enemy footsteps are given a much higher importance rating than those belonging to your teammates, allowing you to react to incoming threats instinctively rather than having to stop and actually double check that it is a threat in the first place. But yeah, the key to this whole setup is that even in the middle of a team firefight, your audio mix is tailored individually to you. So let's go back to those questions. In every situation, Overwatch's important system is ranking other players' actions based on these parameters. So if an enemy player is looking at you, if they've damaged you already, you're going to want to know exactly what they're doing. As a result, they're given a higher importance in that system than other enemies, and their actions are louder in your mix. Distance is also a factor, obviously. If you're close to an enemy, they become a priority, but that's not the entire system. It's complex, it's much more complex than that, and it's also something that's quite difficult to notice without hearing what it's like without the important system in place. So we asked Blizzard to send us over a couple of sample gameplay clips. The first one, which you're about to watch and listen to, doesn't have voice prompts, occlusion, quad delay, all that all important, important system. And it's messy. Individually, the gunfire, the footsteps, the abilities, they all sound fine, but imagine you're the player in this example. Everything is being given the same weight in the audio mix. What do you focus on? What do you pay attention to specifically? It's just noise. And in comparison, here is the same clip, but with those systems in place. This is what Overwatch actually sounds like when you play. There's a gigantic difference. Hi! Contact! Tip top! Enemy turret oh. down! All right then, that wraps it up, and those two clips sort of make this point better than anyone else ever can. Overwatch isn't unique in caring about sound design and how it can benefit the player in terms of gameplay, but it is smart, and frankly, I haven't had that many opportunities to talk about this topic before. Most of the time, these mechanics, the way in which these systems work, stay behind closed doors. Developers like to hold on to these ideas and make sure that they're the ones taking full advantage of them. They don't always share. and. Yeah, I enjoyed hearing about how it actually works and importantly why the team themselves wanted it to work this way. Hopefully you got something out of it too. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video go ahead and give us a like or maybe subscribe if you'd like to see more stuff. Thanks very much, cheers love, bye. <laughs>